Hi everybody, welcome back to week four of our van build. So this week we get our bed fitted. We also did some wiring for the lights and for our fan. And as you can see behind us, we've managed to get the ceiling up. So we're gonna show you our little bed hack. Um, we actually got this idea from Will's Whereabouts and it's basically using Ikea parts to make a fixed bed. So what we've started with, we've got these brackets for the mid beams they use on a lot of the beds. You can actually get these from Ikea spare parts and we'll link that in the description below so you can just go on and get them. People do try and charge, you know, 20 pounds for a pair and things like that on Amazon and eBay. But if you go straight to Ikea from the link we provide, you can get them for free. So we've actually bought these supports. Don't ask me to pronounce. Again, we'll put all the parts in the description below that we use to make the bed. Um, we did actually get interrogated in IKEA for buying so many of these. Um, so yeah, that was a bit strange. Yeah. <laughs> As you only meant to have one per bed, they're a bit confused why we were buying just three of those and the slats. So these are just the mid beams from things like the Malm bed, I think, uses them. So if you look in IKEA, they're, they're on those sections and basically they're extendable mid beams to support these slats. So we're going to go ahead and start putting it together. So guys, just like that, we've got our bed in. It really doesn't take long, it just clips in. You can also use the method cabinet fixings for the upper cabinets. If you wanted like a modular bed that would slide back and forth. So it provides one continuous rail, but we're happy with just the fixed position and how this sits. So next we've got to put some slats on, lay it out and see how it looks. So we've got our slats on, they're not fixed in place yet, but what the plan will be is to screw them into the mid beams now. I'm also going to put a piece of 50 by 50 timber across the back, just so we can move the bed closer to the door slightly, because as it is, there's quite a big gap between the door and the bed. So we want to just try and utilize as much space as possible and giving us that extra 50 or 60 mil will make all the difference. Here we go. And this is the base to our bed. We'll probably show you what it's like with the mattress on um, in next week's video because um, we're due to go away for the 23rd. Another thing I've started to think about this week is the wiring in the van. Um, it's a lot more complex than we had in our T5. That was all just on like one panel at the front by the fridge. So over this side, I've put these wires in currently. So these are our USBs, which can be each side of the bed. Because what I was hoping to do is like a little shelf each side so we can put our phones on and bits and pieces like that. Um, this goes off to the shower light, which is over there. And this is where the shower will be. So again, I'm trying to keep all the light, all the lighting on this side on one feed. So the feed actually comes down to here with one of these brown and blues. So what we're going to do is have a switch here which will control the main ceiling lights, which are having spotlights. The helmet lighting in the kitchen areas, so we just light some low level kind of lighting. And as our T5 had it, we're going to put some fairy lights up as well. Standard van life uh, yeah. fairy lights. Standard van life fairy lights. So we have a three way switch here um, with one of them doing the fairy lights and then two way for the main and the helmet. So we're going to have another switch basically on the side of the kitchen as you come in. So that'll be, as I said, the main lights and the power lights. And I'm also going to get an outside light, which fits just above the door. So that's going to be for when we've got our awning out that we can have a little bit of light and we can just flick that on if needed without having to put lights on 
like battery or solar or USB or something else. We could just got a small light for when we need it. Um, as far as then the rest of the sockets and things, we're gonna have a few sockets on the end of the kitchen, probably a couple on the outer face. So again, we can use it when the door's open and we wanna be outside. Um, and I need to get a feed in for the fridge, which is gonna sit roughly in this area. And really that's about it, apart from a few sockets that'll be dotted around then. We are probably gonna do some of the base of the seats. And again, a couple of USBs just on top of the worktop or something like that, so we can plug stuff in. So you can see by here, guys, I started to measure and cut the frame for the bed recess. So what I've used here is a bit of 50 by 50 plain timber, which gives us just the perfect amount to sit at the top. I'm going to pocket hole those in. I've had to scribe and cut the bottom to follow the contour of the van, but it'll give us the maximum space, so I'm quite happy with that. So once I put the other one in, I've done a quick measure and we'll get 190 centimetres from side to side, and that's with the 25mm Celotex both sides. So I'm really happy with that because it gives us good insulation. Obviously, I've got a carpet all of these areas now today. Cut another three of these and hopefully we get the bed frame like for the walls in and maybe even the the ply bits of the wall as long as i can carpet all of that all around there so it's a bit of a task today as it's quite hot as i'm still in the middle of the heat wave right guys van's a bit of a mess but we've got the shower back wall in the wiring there is for the light at the top so the live is longer there's at the front i'm going to build a door this side probably on here Got have a switch halfway up just to do the light inside the shower so obviously we want that to be independent to the rest of the cab I've made the backboard for the bed I have just got to carpet that now to get that fitted and the other ones in the garden drying so hopefully by the end of the day we'll have a fair few number of walls up I've just got to work out what I'm doing in that gap between the shower I probably just could do some ply there because it's going to be behind the kitchen sink. So I'm going to just seal those last couple of bits up on the insulation. Same on the upright. And yeah, be good to go. So there's our bed extension installed. So I put an extra support in at the top just to keep it more solid. And there's one at the bottom. Obviously, all these holes are going to be covered anyway as we're going to put something in there which I'm going to leave as a surprise for later. I've carpeted the bottom rail just to tidy things up a little bit and I've also carpeted this upright. At the moment I'm half and half whether I'm going to put a layer of like really thin cladding down there but what I didn't want to do is leave it and then not be able to fix the cladding properly. So at the moment I've just carpeted around that reveal. I've still got to carpet all these back door areas but it's not stopped me putting this this section in so I'm fairly happy with that so yeah the next step is going to do the other side see where all these holes and start carpeting the rear section I've also got a reversing camera to fit hence why I've not insulated any of this channel at the moment as we've got to pull that to the front of the van and we've also got to put the washers on as we forgot on the spreader plate so that's a job for tomorrow hi guys welcome back to the van so i've started making a bit of progress on the ceiling you can see i've done three strips at the moment so it's only a little bit of progress but i'm fairly happy with how it's gone I've got to keep on watching my head and all the cables obviously i've wired the van as well at the moment so hence why i wanted to get this centerpiece of the ceiling up which was quite important as it houses a lot of our lights so the main sort of run of lights down the center of the van we are going to have one at the front so we'll spin you guys round we've got these tails coming out here they're going to be above the door as you come in um, and also behind me in the shower we've got a couple there just to go up on the ceiling so again, the reason I'm trying to get some of the ceiling up, I wired everything, and as you've seen from the shower ones, everything's just falling down because of the heat, the tape isn't sticking very well. So I thought, I want to get these up, get the cables 
pushed up out of the way using the wood so I'm not relying on tape and coming in and everything's on the floor again so we've also got the bed frame in now which in hindsight should have left out until I've done the roof but it was a uh, it was being put in as we were meant to be away next weekend but that's actually the weekend after now so I'm gonna carry on with the ceiling today hopefully get this sort of side done towards the the shower away from the sliding door because to be honest there's nothing else over there holding me up I've got the max fan on the passenger side which I then need to sort of mark around cut and things like that so what I'm probably going to do is just go straight over it and then cut it back out with a, a multi-tool or something like that just to make life easy. Putting a few slats of the ceiling up I thought I'd better test the lights because I, one of my feeds did pull out earlier so we've just rigged the temporary battery I've got at the moment um, up to the lighting switch so hopefully they turn on now. And we have light. So at least they're all on and fairly happy with that. Yeah, we've chosen different lights to the ones we had in our last van. So we've gone for more of a flat spotlight rather than the other ones stuck out quite a lot. And they were like a bright white light, whereas these are kind of warmer light so yeah happy with that should we test the max fan yeah the max fan next Ooh, it works. So as you can see guys here's the progress on the ceiling so those are the cables ready to connect into the main feed for the lights i've countersunk all the holes so they can just be filled over we've given the wood a coat of primer just to seal it off so that's been done both sides and you can see here how we're sort of getting along so this join here obviously i've tucked all the cables up behind hoping that'll pull together as we put another piece in now but all in all, I'm fairly happy with how it's sort of started. It's fixing up well, it's staying there. I'm using this plasterboard prop just to close up the gaps. It's, so I'm trying to do it on my own. It's just nice to get that support in there. So I can concentrate on making sure everything's straight and level. So guys, you can see I carried on with the ceiling. Um, to be honest, I was struggling with it at first, getting this tongue and groove to sit nicely. First time I've ever done it. So I don't know if it's like a common knowledge thing, but what I've been doing is leaving my last line of screws slightly slack. So basically the board will flex a bit more like these. You can see that one's moving quite a bit. And it just allows me to get the angle right to get the board in. And I've been finding it a lot easier to just slide them in Whereas before I was doing it tight to the ceiling, getting them in my finished position and it was sort of stopping me where I've got like different angles on the van and things like that, where the wood is maybe slightly dipping or something like that. It was making life extremely difficult to get that section in. So I see the one thing I want to do before I sort of go any further with all of this is just test this light. We tested the main lights yesterday. Um, as you've seen, I wired this straight into those, so it should work. But I'm just going to check before I put like a long piece down here because what I don't want to do is end up having to take it all back off because it's all interlinked. So let's have a look. So that was a success guys. As you can see this light was working. It ties in with the rest of the lights. The reason I've offset this one to this position is because it's going to be over our entrance to our door so what we're doing is having the kitchen extend out over the door because the door opening is so wide in the 
boxer relays and those types of vans they just make sense to use that space um, because standard motorhomes I think the door width is something like 17 inches so that works out to about 600 mil I think something like that so it's not a huge gap so what I'm going to do is leave about 600 from the frame of the door or the seal to our kitchen so at least it gives us a decent walkway in and this is centre to that walkway then so as we're coming into the van we can turn the light switch on on the side of the kitchen giving us illumination inside there's also outside lights I'm going to be putting on so when it's dark and things like that we're not coming into a pitch black van you can see the step you've got to get onto. That's all for this week's video as always thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up to date with our van build journey. And next week guys we'll be building the shower and hopefully having our first night away in the van so catch us for that one.